So what is big data and what role does it play in understanding societies better? Instead of giving you one concrete definition of saying, well, this is big data, now memorize this definition, I will give you five characteristics that are most often present when people use this term big data that I don't really like a lot and many people don't like, but that's the term people use. So first of all, it's has to do with a digital footprint, especially in the social sciences. You can think about really as the digital footprint that we leave behind uh, when we interact through digital networks or with digital equipment. And it's produced anyways for free. It's just a footprint. We don't purposefully put effort into leaving it behind. It's just, it's just left behind. Second of all, the second characteristic refers to the fact that it's often a lot of data. So that's actually where the term comes from, big data. The effect for the social sciences is that we can often forego sampling. So usually what we traditionally did is we just looked at a subgroup of people in society and just worked with them. It had to usually be between 60 and 80 people for it to be representative. It had to be random sampling and so forth. And the sampling we usually refer to as the small n. And the big n, the universe, referred to all the people that were actually present. Now, the idea behind big data is, well, we use the digital footprint of almost everybody that is in a specific task or a specific sector, so we don't have to sample. We just register everybody who is in there. So small n, the sample is equal to big N, the entire universe that we are working with. So this is a reference to, to statistical work. Uh, the third characteristic is what people call data fusion, and that's the fact that big data, the digital footprint, is often highly unstructured and incomplete. Uh, you're not rigorously on social networks every day, and not everybody is with the same intensity on social networks. So what we say is, well, it's as unstructured, it's completely incomplete, so if I have a database, not every row and every column is completely filled out, but we have so much of it, we use complementary data sources to make up for the missing pieces. And these data sources can be of different kind. So I don't have a lot of text posted from you on social networks, but I have pictures from you posted on social networks, or maybe videos, or maybe they're audio bytes. So I take different kinds of digital footprints and make up for the holes in this messy footprint that I actually get back in order to create structured databases that I can then analyze. So this idea is usually referred to as data fusion because I fuse different sources of data in order to complete my data set. Fourth, big data is very often available in real time and that became a big challenge because our statistical methods are not really developed for real time work with, with data. Not all big data is real time and it's not always absolutely necessary and we can do a lot without real time work but it's a very new and very fancy and very useful characteristic of this digital footprint. And last but not least, big data, the fact that there's so much data available made machine learning algorithms really effective. Before this digital footprint, machine learning algorithms didn't really work a lot. People were laughing about them, but they really get a lot of returns. They become very effective once we feed them with a lot of data. And with a lot of data, they even become more effective than other statistical inferences methodology. So we just let the machine discover a pattern. And since there's so much data, they just discover a pattern that often they don't what makes really sense to us. So there is no really a theory behind it. We don't come from a theory to discover it. We just let the machine loose, go through the data, and it tells us some things. Sometimes uh, they're very interesting insights that the machine gives us. Uh, and then we look for a theory, but in retrospect. Actually, the machine, the machine itself, it didn't have a theory, it doesn't really, it just looks for patterns. So these are five characteristics that most often are present when people talk about big data. It's just a catchphrase that often represents these, these five characteristics. So let us go through them one by one. I give you some examples of each one of these characteristics.